Hello, everyone. Welcome to this next lesson on integrating even powers of sines and cosines. In this lesson, we will solve example two. These even power problems can always be solved by immediately substituting in the half angle formulas for sine squared and cosine squared. However, what follows is extremely tedious and it takes many steps. It is a very good exercise to try that method too. You will be convinced that it is a lot faster to apply the double angle formula immediately. That's what we're going to do here. Let's go over to the side and see how the double angle identity comes into play. Here's the sine 3x times cosine 3x. Let's put a 2 in front so it fits the double angle formula. What's that equal to? Good, sine 6x. Because we see squares in the integrand, let's square both sides. And here's what we get. All right, back to the integral. Let's write in sine squared of 6x. To get rid of that 4, we'll put a 1 fourth outside. Now the problem is very similar to example 1. We know how to solve that, right? Substitute the half angle identity for sine squared in. We get the integral of 1 minus cosine of 12x over 2. Pull out the 1 half. We have 1 eighth times the integral of 1 minus cosine 12x. Integrate 1, we get x. Integrate cosine 12x, write down sine 12x, and work backwards by differentiating. The derivative of sine 12x is cosine 12x times 12. That means we need 1 over 12 in front of the sine 12x. Plus c, multiply the 1 eighth through and we're done. Can we picture in our mind what happens if the sine and cosine were each raised to a fourth power? That fraction 1 minus cosine 12x over 2 would have to be squared. That expands into three terms with a cosine squared of 12x. That's where the half angle identity for cosine would get used. We rarely see very high powered even problems on exams because a teacher gets a headache correcting those too. Next time we'll do example three. You see the two even powers here add up to six. See you then, bye.